this video was made possible by Skillshare. Use the link below to get a one month free trial of online classes, where you can learn just about anything. Starting out in astrophotography can be quite difficult. There are lots of new terms to learn, some of them more important than others. But if you have seen backyard astrophotographers taking images like these and want to do the same, there is one step you cannot get around. Calibration. This is the third video in a series where I will try to do my best to explain what calibration is, how to do it and what these calibration frames are. You might have heard about bias dark and flat frames, that they are used to correct something in the image. But what exactly do we need to correct? Join me on this journey, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. In the last two videos we already discussed bias and dark frames. If you haven't seen those, I highly recommend doing that first. By using bias and darks we removed several different types of noise from our light frames to improve the final result. With the last type of calibration frame we tackle the most obvious sorts of defects. Vignetting and dust. Welcome back to my stacking software AstroPixel processor. This is a most recent project of mine, the Orion Nebula. I've taken these images through the TechnoSky refractor with an ASI-294 and an Optolong L-Pro filter. I'm mentioning those for a reason. We can see some stars and a bit of the nebula and we can see much more if I stretch it. Now we see a beautiful Orion Nebula and two very obvious annoying defects. The most obvious and the most annoying, vignetting. Vignetting is an optical defect which originates from the lenses of the telescope. As soon as you have more than one optical surface, vignetting will come into play. The edges of the sensor will receive less light, which results in less contrast and brightness the farther you go from the image center. Other reasons for vignetting can be filters, if they don't cover the entire sensor. The other visible defect is dust. Those dark circles here, there are multiple of them, are small modes of dust which are enlarged since they are out of focus. People wearing glasses can relate. And these pieces of dust can cause real trouble. Between the imaging sessions dust can move around and new dust can smudge your lens. This is why we can't prepare flat frames in advance, like bias and dark frames. They have to represent the current state of the optical system. Some people say that keeping the lenses very clean can help, but I don't take those chances. To get a better understanding of what a flat frame should look like, let's look at one of them. I will now load a flat frame from this exact same night. And I know this doesn't look like much. But we can make this better. I am now in Photoshop and by adjusting the levels on this image we can make the actual data visible. You can see on the histogram on the right here that all the data is on the small strip in the center of the histogram. And that's exactly what we want. If I now adjust the levels we can slowly start to see, to see what is going on here. I have to look over the camera that's why I'm doing this. Now we can see what the flat frames are for. They are used to correct vignetting, dust and uneven illumination. All these arrows would be in your final image. And now we have a way to address that. Just like with bias and dark frames. In order to remove the defect we need to take an image with only the defect. Regarding flat frames we need to take an image of the inside of the entire optical train. These images need to be evenly illuminated, correctly exposed and focused just like your light frames. If you move the focuser and shoot your flat frames after that, the dust spots will have changed in size and will no longer be the same as in your light frames. The whole thing gets even more complicated if you use filters. You'll need an extra set of flat frames for each filter. You see that this calibration frame is a little bit more complicated than bias and dark frames. That's why I will break this down into some several different topics. At first you need a light source. The entire aperture of the telescope must be evenly illuminated. The most obvious source of light is the blue sky at dawn. And in order to achieve the even illumination, the most common method is to use a white t-shirt. Waiting for dawn can be very inconvenient. 
That's why many astrophotographers use an artificial light source to take the flat frames right after the imaging session. I am one of those people as well. My first approach was to use a tablet and display a completely white screen. And you can adjust the brightness with this method, which is very convenient. There are of course dedicated flat frame panels you can buy in Astro shops. But for a starter, any old light panel will do. Just make sure it's white light, in order to get a better result if you use different filters. At the end of the imaging session, I point my telescope straight up, put the t-shirt on and place the tablet with the white screen on top. The shirt is not really necessary here, but better safe than sorry. If you take sky flats, keeping the fabric tight is very important in order to achieve an even illumination. Since we now have an evenly illuminated telescope, let's talk camera settings. In order to capture the entrails of the telescope, lenses, filters, the sensor, the exposure needs to be adjusted properly. Not too dark and not too bright. Let's start with DSLRs. As soon as your light source is attached, set the camera to AV mode. This way the camera will decide the correct exposure settings by itself to achieve a histogram in the center of the range. Good flat frames lie between 20 to 80% of the full range. It does not matter if the brightness changes a tiny bit in between the exposures. Modern stacking software will even these imperfections out. Use the same ISO as in your light frames to correctly identify hot and cold pixels, since flat frames are also used to correct these types of errors. For users of dedicated astronomy cameras, this process is not much different. The only problem is that these cameras don't have an AV mode. You still want a histogram at the center of the range. With my ASI-294 I try to take a couple of different exposures with different shutter speeds in order to get the histogram at the center. Most confusion arises when the talk is about the ADU value and how to, for example in APT, use the FLATS8 panel. I will link a good tutorial video for that in the description below. You see that flat frames require a lot of knowledge about not only astronomy and telescopes, but also the basics of photography. That's why I'm glad that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare offers many different online classes on photography, maybe cities, landscapes, beautiful nature or even the basics of astrophotography. But in my recent absence from the astronomy community, I've been more engaged with time-lapse and nature photography and the correct way of properly editing those in Lightroom. The class from Fabian here was a real eye-opener and I'm still trying to get my routine right. And if you want your share in this great community, now is your chance. The first 1000 people to click on the link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So be sure to check that out and redeem your first steps in a new world of creativity. Now back to the flat frames. Remember that flats need to accurately display the current state of your optical system. If one dust spot moves around after you finish taking your light frames, a flat frame will not be able to repair that. That's why most astrophotographers take their flats in the middle of the night, right after the imaging session. Don't touch the focuser, don't change the filters and don't even pump into your telescope. If you have to wait until morning or even carry the telescope inside, make sure to do that carefully and don't wipe the lenses clean after that. The flat frames are very important. In this last section I want to address some common issues with flat frames. The use of different filters can cause quite some confusion. Let me show you an example. This is a basic light pollution filter and the histogram is nicely in the center. But now I switch to a multi-narrowband filter and the result is awkward. The filter does not allow an even histogram, which is why we need to negotiate. Try to find an exposure time that exposes the low peak enough without overexposing the brighter peak. If you use flat frames for the first time, there's a chance you might fail. I've had some people in the comments asking for help regarding improper calibration. I have also made this experience a few times, especially with dedicated astronomy cameras. If you use an artificial light source, you have to make sure that the shutter speed of the camera does not match the modulation frequency of the light source. 
To avoid that, my recommendation is to lower the brightness of the light and shoot longer flat frames with at least one second of exposure time. If you can't change the brightness of your light source, use more sheets in between until it's right. At last, a small mention about a calibration frame you might not have heard of yet. As I said in the video about bias frames, some people and even manufacturers do not recommend the usage of bias frames, but something called a dark flat frame. Since dark flats are more closely related with flat frames, now's the right time to talk about them. A dark flat is a dark frame with the same exposure time as the flats. They are used to properly calibrate the flats before combining them. If you don't use dark flats, the dark frame will be used to calibrate the flat frame. And some people don't agree with that. They completely replace the bias frames with dark flat frames, which is also a good option. As a beginner, you don't need to worry about that yet. You can use bias frames or dark flat frames or even both. Deep Sky Stacker, for example, has a correct routine for all of these cases. In my recent images, I used the entire collection of calibration frames. Bias, darks, flats and dark flats. And the results speak for themselves. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the last video in the series, where I will walk you through some examples of calibration in software with Deep Sky Stacker and Astro Pixel processor. A big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and I will see you in the next one. As for me, my name is Tim, I'm an Astro Addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.